Hello, I'm Scott Patrick. If you love Hallmark Channel and you also love Jane Austen, well, it's time to fall in love with new films now playing on Hallmark to celebrate Jane Austen's timeless legacy. One of those films is An American in Austen, the story of a woman who believes no man can live up to Mr. Darcy, and then she woke up and found herself living in the novel Pride and Prejudice. Eliza Bennett stars in this film. An interview with Eliza is coming up, but first, here's a preview of An American in Austin. It's a shooting star. Quick, make a wish. I wish for Mr. Darcy. Um, what is happening? She's arrived! Fall captive to a great story. I'm stuck in Pride and Prejudice. <gasps> okay, I'm officially freaking out. And who is that? Mr. Darcy. Oh, boy. An American in Austin. On Hallmark. All right, Eliza, thank you for joining us on Dish in the Dish Studio. Let's start with the hard-hitting questions. Tell us all about your character, Harriet. Okay, yes. So Harriet is in the modern day era. She is a aspiring author. She's a book lover. She is kind and funny and stubborn, but she's also sort of chaotic and idealistic and a little bit too romantic for her own um, for her own good. I think she bigs up ideas of what a man should be or what a romance should be. You know, she has a tick list and a lot of that tick list is basically Mr. Darcy in Pride and Prejudice. Um, and so in this movie, she gets thrown into the real book of Pride and Prejudice and she sort of becomes face to face with this book that she's idealized her entire life. Exactly. And I think as she goes under the surface of these characters and and she talks to Mr. Darcy and there are some sparks there, but I think inevitably when you have a fantasy of a man in your head, I think inevitably you realize that they are just a human that has flaws. Mm -hmm. And so I think it sort of chips away at a lot of <laughs> Exactly. Uh, what's got in her way and uh, as she starts to sort of ruin the book by being there she realizes she, she has to put it back together. And certainly the fantasy versus reality and relationships was very alive then and certainly even more alive today with movies, television shows and beyond. Yeah I think that's definitely true and sometimes also your reality there's something actually really magic and special there that you haven't really been able to see clearly because you've been stuck in some sort of fantasy world that's taken you away from what's right in front of you and yeah i definitely i remember when i was younger as well everyone would have like a tick list well they have to have this and well they can't be like this and they have to be interested in this sport and support this team and and then the reality is the person that they always fall in love with tends to you know only tick half of those boxes but at the end of the day sometimes you just have chemistry and there's love and then all of those things fall by the wayside because because you're in love with that person you know David Beckham's perfect to look at but I'm sure he's not you know he's not a perfect human being none of us are and also no one should have that expectation of you as well we're all flawed and and um you know you shouldn't you shouldn't date someone for the potential of themselves you know I'm curious about your thoughts about the Jane Austen era and her writing back in the 1800s and how that impacted women then and continues to impact women today? Yeah, I think that's a good question. I think, I mean, obviously Jane Austen of her time, she was writing women that were sort of pushing the boundaries, um, that were craving something that wasn't just sort of an arranged marriage that would, you know, there's a line in the film that talks about how, you know, only men have the luxury of marrying for love and, and you know, having these women want more than just sort of marrying some 50 year old man when they're 18 years old. Women are 50% of the population and that was exciting for mm -hmm. people to read about these women that push the boundaries. And then I think, you know, you put the Regency dresses and the balls and, you know, there's just something so romantic and luxurious about making eyes at someone across a ball and, and dancing where you can only touch each other in certain places. And, you know, it's a very romantic era. Jane is simply magical. Perhaps her sister catches your eye. There is no one here to tempt me. You should return to your partner. She's easily the most tolerable of them all. Darcy, you are far too difficult to please. Excuse me. Hi. Um, 
I've always struggled with this part, you know, the obnoxious locker room bravado. And just so you know, that tolerable woman is the best thing that could ever happen to you. And the only embarrassing thing is how long it takes for you to see it. Wow, you're hot. What a strange creature. So the obvious question, uh, do you consider yourself a hopeless romantic when it comes to uh, movies and television shows? I do. I do. I love romance. I'd say like a lot of my favorite shows are romance that are told over a long period of time, you know, and sometimes those things are complicated and sometimes they're ugly and people behave badly. But I, <laughs> I do. I, I, I am drawn to things where people sort of have this love that, that, that has to fight against um, obstacles and, and things that get in the way or, or cultural sort of taboo. And I do. I do. I will say I loved watching Pride and Prejudice when I was younger. I watched um, Sense and Sensibility when I was younger. And, you know, and now we have obviously Bridgerton and all these uh, things that, you know, these new adaptations of these eras. And I think there's a reason that they're hugely popular. Yeah, it must be great to go back in time when you're playing a character to see what that time felt like and what those corsets felt like. But knowing after they yell cut, you'll be coming back to today. Well, I did have to wear a corset a couple of times, but I do think what's so great about being an actor is, yeah, when people say, if, was there another era that you'd rather live in? As a woman, definitely present day is is better for women than it was back then. But the, the best thing about being an actor is, is you know, you get to go back and, ex and really experience sort of all the romantic, incredible parts of that era. You know, those costumes that we exactly. wore were authentic and and borrowed from angels in london which is an incredible costume house and to to be able to wear all of those costumes and and have all our hair and pearls and then to walk into an incredible sort of palace and have a hundred dancers dancing regency dances i mean it's just like such a a fortunate part of this job that we get to experience i get sort of all all the fun parts of it without you know the sexism so it's perfect <laughs> All right, as we wrap up here, why should we take a trip with an American in Austin and watch this new Hallmark movie? I think people should see this movie. One, because if you love Hallmark, I'm, I know that you're going to love this film. But also, I think I think it's just, it's fun as well. I think it's one of the more comedic films, which I think might be surprising when we're touching on Jane Austen. But uh, there's so much humor in the sort of like modern version of Harriet sort of being plonked <laughs> in this Regency era. And the fact that she literally seems like a weird strange foreign person and they blame a lot on it on the a lot of it on the fact that harriet's american um <laughs> there's a lot of jokes about her being american and that's why she's so strange but there's a lot of um there's a lot of humor between the fact that you know harriet's language is very modern they don't understand what she's saying all the time when she turns up in the world she's barefoot and wearing a shirt dress and um and so I think so much of that has that sort of like fun smash up between eras. And and if you're a fan of the book, you know, there's lines that are dotted in that I think are really fun that like, you know, touch on her knowing what's going to happen before it happens. And so, yeah, I think there's multiple love stories in this as well, because, of course, we have Bingley and Jane and we have Darcy and Harriet and Darcy and Elizabeth. Um, so I just think there's a lot to get your teeth into. Thank you so much for your time. I'm so excited to be in this movie in particular because the costumes are incredible, everyone looks incredible. Today we're shooting this ball scene. It's the Netherfield ball, which is a ball that Bingley gives so he can hang out with Jane and the Bennett sisters. I've only ever done one other job where I wore period costumes, but I think as soon as you put the costumes on, it's just a different world. Very uncomfortable shoes, uncomfortable corsets, and ball gowns. It's just really necessary, it just feels like it's excessive. The costumes are, are, are wonderful, but they are really important, I think, when you're getting into character and being on set. Mr. Darcy. Miss Bennett. So as soon as I put on the shoes and the dress and the hair, it just brings everything nicely together. I think the sets, the costumes, they've all just done an amazing job. Thank goodness, because it makes my job very, very easy. An American in Austin on Hallmark.